Tonight, we are delighted to have Dr. Haider Ali Khan as the guest speaker in this event, who has joined us from the US. Dr. Khan is a distinguished professor of economics at the Joseph Corbell School of International Studies, University of Denver. He has been involved as an advisor to several education institutions and serving as an international advisor to the European Economic and Social Committee. This lecture is a special lecture from the center, which is a tribute to the heroic contribution of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and to observe Mujib Orshan. To begin with, I may now request Mr. Mufidul Haq, Director, Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice, and Trustee, Liberation War Museum, to give his welcome address to the audience. Uh, a warm welcome to everybody and uh, a good day to everyone because uh, it's uh, morning in some part of the world and we are evening, late evening in Bangladesh and we are very happy to launch this lecture series. Every year we organize a lecture on August. This year it's a very special year, the birth centenary of Father of the Nation. And we thought that we will start a series of lectures focusing on different aspects of his life. And we are happy that we are initiating this with the special lecture by Professor Hazar Ali Khan. It's very difficult to say, introduce him to the audience. I can only say that uh, you will understand his uh, depth of uh, knowledge, his analytical mind and the way he can contextualize the contribution of Bangabandhu and the significance of emergence of Bangladesh in broad historical perspective and also looking at it from the contemporary social, economic and political theory and adding a new dimension. And I think that's the most important aspect of such an analysis. And he is also a man with a varied interest. He is a poet. He is a singer. He is very much a public intellectual. And most importantly, his academic pursuits also reflect this. And you will also see that he sometimes he becomes a bit philosophical, sometimes, or maybe always the touch of poetry in his uh, essays. And more, most importantly, the deep insight. And I think this lecture is very important because we do not have much time in such lecture. And also, this is the first time we are organizing lectures in uh, webinar in Zoom link. And we are doing this for the since the COVID-19 attack, which has uh, people does in many ways. And we say that our museum, doors of our museum are closed, but we are opening our windows. And this is another window that we are opening. And this is a great opportunity for all of us to use the social media platform, the digital communication, and use it effectively and meaningfully. This lecture uh, shall provide the audience a brief idea of the oppressed people worldwide who have struggled for liberation and independence with a specific focus on Bangladesh. The speaker shall narrate his involvement in such struggle in 1971 and how he explored the charismatic leadership of the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. I believe in the end of the lecture, he shall speak also about uh, some of the strategies, some strategic agendas to the youth at present who are engaged in various movements against oppression, racism, etc. Now, without any further ado, I may request our speaker to this webinar to deliver his lecture. Over to you, Professor. Thank you, uh, Noreen, and uh, uh, my heartfelt thanks to all of you, uh, especially to uh, Mr. Mufidul Haq, um, a freedom fighter um, and uh, very dear to me. Um, uh, I always call him Mufid Bhai, uh, affectionately, um, and uh, uh, my respect and my affection for him uh, truly. Uh, are boundless. Remind the audience, especially the young people among the audience, uh, the, uh, of what uh, Noreen just said, uh, uh, that uh, I have an agenda uh, of thought and action, 
especially for the younger generations uh, in uh, all the countries on our planet uh, in the 21st century, because we are facing a grave situation. Perhaps uh, our whole planetary civilization has never faced uh, uh, multiple threats of the kind that we face today. Uh, and uh, we have to do what we can, and we have to do it together. And we have to learn uh, from the successes and failures of past movements, of past leadership, uh, and we have to carry the struggle forward uh, in a better way uh, in these very, very uh, crisis-ridden, uh, difficult times indeed. Uh, but in my talk today, I will uh, um, uh, do it in three parts. Uh, uh, first of all, I will give you a brief uh, overview of uh, my project or projects. Um, uh, and uh, I will also uh, try to give you some uh, a feeling for what it was like to be alive that day uh, or that uh, through that that decade, um, um, I should say. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I will present the 11 points of uh, uh, those uh, points for thought and action for the young people right at the end of this, because uh, the next two sections will be uh, historical, uh, uh, although uh, historical uh, with lessons uh, for us uh, uh, today. Uh, uh, in the uh, for, uh, second part, I will discuss the uh, quite quite briefly uh, the uh, the main uh, trajectory of uh, struggle uh, since the founding of, of Pakistan until the beginning of uh, uh, Mukti Juddho, um, uh, and then in the final part. I will discuss uh, uh, Bangabandhu's uh, internationalism and international activities uh, um, uh, after uh, his return uh, in uh, early 1972 in Bangladesh. But uh, I will uh, uh, show, uh, I hope uh, uh, in a way that may be new to at least some of you, uh, that uh, uh, Bangabandhu's internationalism was not a sudden development. Uh, uh, it was there throughout his life, uh, uh, from his uh, earliest uh, uh, days of political involvement, and certainly uh, from uh, um, uh, the founding of Army League uh, uh, in 1949 onward. So without further ado, let me um, uh, launch into the first section. And uh, please allow me uh, to take you to a certain day uh, in January, um, 1971. Uh, more precisely, I'm talking about the 3rd of January, 1971. Uh, this was a momentous day for many of us and many, I'm sure, uh, still remember that day, um, especially among the founders of Mukti Juddha Jadughar, the uh, Liberation War Museum and other uh, Mukti Juddha's freedom fighters from that period, like Mufid Bhai. Uh, uh, those memories uh, must be uh, still uh, very vivid as are mine. Um, uh, actually, I was uh, 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 not very old at that time, certainly much younger than I am today. Uh, I was a teenager, uh, uh, still in high school, uh, but involved uh, because of uh, uh, family and friends and, and because of the times uh, in uh, politics already. And as Mufid Bhai mentioned, especially in the cultural front. And uh, uh, on that day, uh, some of the young activists uh, of uh, Aomi League um, and of East Pakistan Student Union uh, together uh, had taken me to, uh, to that venue um, and uh, uh, put me in a place uh, um, uh, uh, because of their kindness, uh, I think, uh, uh, from where I could observe the events uh, uh, very well. Um, and uh, uh, I don't want to go into the details, but uh, 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 Wordsworth writes in his uh, um, great autobiographical, uh, 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 really epic poem, uh, uh, The Prelude, um, about the French Revolution, um, uh, that uh, uh, bliss it was to be alive that day, but to be young was very heaven. Uh, but uh, I want to mention it because uh, uh, it is probably not uh, possible uh, for uh, younger people today 
to realize uh, revolutions really are uh, mass processes and mass events. Uh, leaders emerge uh, uh, because of the situation and because of their long experience uh, of struggle and sacrifices in struggle. So um, uh, um, uh, there is a logic uh, to revolutionary leadership. Uh, uh, it's not politics as usual. It's not just uh, a crass opportunism and uh, 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 following the wind, uh, no matter in which direction it blows. Uh, um, uh, good revolutionary leadership as Bongo Bondus was and as many other peoples uh, at that time uh, uh, was. Uh, is really based on very sound, fundamental, deeply felt, um, firmly held principles. Uh, uh, but uh, they also um, um, uh, are based on strategic vision. They are based on good tactical sense. Uh, uh, and all of these things, uh, Bongo Bundu really combined uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, more uh, proportions, I think, uh, uh, to a higher degree. Uh, than the other leaders uh, of that time. And this is not to uh, belittle the other leaders whom I respect a great deal. Uh, 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 people like uh, Maulana Bhashani of uh, uh, NAP, of Mujaffar Ahmad of NAP, of Muni Singh uh, of Communist Party, uh, and many other leaders, um, uh, even Nurul Amin, who was uh, quite reactionary uh, uh, in many ways. Uh, uh, at times uh, uh, criticized the government, uh, but from his own rather conservative position. Uh, in, in, as a historian, I try to be fair uh, to all the actors, but I also want to give uh, the proper evaluation to everyone, including uh, the architect in a way uh, uh, and, and, and the leader uh, of uh, uh, the liberation movement increasingly from uh, 1969 onwards, uh, Bongo Bundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. So methodologically and substantively for progressive political practice, the most important lesson for young people everywhere from the lifelong political activism of Bongo Bundu is to recognize the importance of building progressive political movements and to learn constantly from within the movement about the relationships between the local and global politics, between the complex, sometimes with many contradictory elements that need to be confronted and analyzed openly and honestly. So this complex nationalism of the oppressed and the equally complex democratic internationalism from below. So this is, a, this is an abiding theme and this theme will be very important uh, uh, both for the global North as we call this now and the global South. Secondly, uh, the post-World War II socioeconomic, political, social democratic or embedded liberal consensus in the global North is frayed, uh, to put it mildly. Young people need to build various types of socially oriented democratic movements today. Thirdly, in the global South, Although export-led growth became possible for some countries that pursued what I have called strategic openness, most countries did not or could not achieve this kind of growth. There are important consequences of this. Fourth, furthermore, the gains from globalization when present have been unevenly distributed everywhere. Consequently, inequalities in income and wealth distribution have risen almost everywhere in the world in the late 20th and in the 21st century so far. Fifth, therefore, we have a heavily polarized world, both in the global north and in the global south. We have to build a movement for fighting to remove the root causes of polarization, the root causes of polarization. We cannot just fight it superficially and fight a few symptoms and take a few kind of palliative measures, uh, which is what most often is done uh, by the liberals. Uh, they are not bad. I don't oppose them. I support them actually very strongly, and I support them more deeply than, than they do, in fact. Uh, uh, but we have to go to the root causes. Number six, building various types of socially oriented democratic movements will require courage and steadfastness. 
But these qualities are not enough from Bangabundhu and the Bangladesh Liberation Movement. We can also learn the value of organizing in a detailed, consistent manner relentlessly, always going lower and deeper among the masses. Learning from Rosa Luxemburg's dialectical analysis, which was independently rediscovered and applied creatively by Bangabundhu, we should fight for both broad and specific reforms everywhere, but build a base for ever deeper social and democratic transformations within our fight for reforms. This is a very, very important point, perhaps the most important point in my 11 points. Uh, and uh, it was one of my uh, uh, discoveries, uh, uh, surprising discoveries actually, uh, because I was stuck in a different mode of thought that Bangabandhu discovered this independently. He probably never read Rosa Luxemburg. I'm sure he had heard of her, um, but uh, uh, he discovered this through his own experience, through his own involvement uh, in mass movements and rising to the leadership uh, 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 with a certain degree of international awareness in these movements. Okay, let me go on to the seventh point. Uh, one must build local and global anti-racist and anti-fascist democratic coalitions strategically, but tactics need to be flexible and adaptable according to changing internal, that is national, and external, that is international conditions. Uh, uh, Bangabandhu really was extremely masterful in this, uh, uh, as I will show in the second and third parts of my talk. Point number eight, there will be no narrow one size fits all narrative of struggle. Instead, there will be many voices. This is the polyphony that uh, I uh, uh, arrive at theoretically. There will be many voices necessitating the building of appropriate polyphonic narratives of resistance. It is crucial for all voices to be heard and all liberatory points of view to be discussed openly. Point number nine, as the eventualizing dynamics unfold with multiple trajectories in specific parts of the world, the leaders of mass movements must choose carefully and optimally at each step, but know that all liberation struggles must embrace to various degrees some uncertainty. It is not possible to build a progressive political movement without embracing uncertainty, but to do it in a rational manner. Uh, you, you have to be prepared to make mistakes, but uh, uh, you should try to avoid making too big mistakes. And that's one of the gains from uh, reading history carefully and creatively. Uh, this is something that we can learn from all struggles, uh, uh, including the struggles in Bangladesh and the leadership uh, of Bangabundhu and other leaders. Number 10, therefore, a polychronotope of struggle will be the norm. But how to understand the polychronotope for each situation and sequence of events is an empirical matter, calling also for a great deal of political judgment and maturity so that both ultra leftist adventurism and opportunistic rightism can be avoided at crucial strategic junctures. This will truly have to be an exercise in the applied science of complex socio-economic political systems. Bangabundhu's life of steadfast political engagement has many specific lessons to offer that we can discuss. Uh, finally, number 11, the progressive struggles themselves will be kaleidoscopic, but broad qualities like anti-patriarchy, anti-racism, including respecting the rights of minority groups, particularly the indigenous peoples and movements towards equalizing socially embedded capabilities. This is another concept that uh, uh, is an extension of uh, my uh, respected teacher, uh, Nobel laureate, Professor Amurtha Sen's idea of capabilities. So equalizing socially embedded capabilities for all will give an egalitarian strategic focus for deepening 
democracy. This is very important. Together with a steady strategy of democratic internationalism, the movements of the future will be able to organize for liberation, both locally and globally in an integrated manner. Mm -hmm.